This is Mike Elder, head football coach at Avon High School in Ohio. This is Tyler Roll, offensive coordinator at North Dakota State University. This is Todd Drury, defense coordinator at Western Illinois, and you're listening to the Coach and coordinator, coordinator Podcast. podcast. And if you let the player have some autonomy on maybe a play, maybe a scheme, maybe a technique, and you see that it fits within the offense, they're going to have complete ownership within that scheme. Having a strong start to the season is in direct correlation to player buy-in. It requires more than telling players they need to own things. It's creating the environment where they have the opportunity to take ownership of the team, offense, defense, and special teams. Today we talk with Mike Elder, head coach of Avon High School in Ohio, Tyler Roll, offensive coordinator at North Dakota State, and Todd Drury, defensive coordinator at Western Illinois. Through the ideas and examples they give, we learn more about the things we can do to create the buy-in needed to get the season started off with a strong foundation with the players and coaches aligned in the culture. From rewarding players for things that take no talent, like effort, to giving them a stake in the coaching of the team, and building the preparation in a detailed way that they know they are ready, focusing on specific behaviors and building them into your team, unit, and position group, sets the team up for success with a player-led culture. What you see on tape is a direct reflection of what you teach and how you teach. Video is important, but if you don't teach well, you're not going to like what you see on your video. First Down Playbook has been helping coaches teach better for 13 years. It allows you to present installs, playbooks, and practice cards in half the time with NFL quality. Coaching tools like video pairing, a player app, practice schedules, and wristband sheets have made First Down Playbook a program management system with everything in one place. If you're in a position of leadership with your football program, receive a free one-week look at First Down Playbook. Call them at 512-814-6158 or visit them on their website or social media. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code COACH24 to receive a $100 discount off the normal $700 First Down Playbook team membership price. Links and the phone number are in the show notes. First up is Mike Elder, head coach at Avon High School. He talks about how they create an environment where everyone is involved in the things that take no talent, like effort. He also explains something he learned from his coach, College Football Hall of Famer Larry Karras, which helps in keeping his players engaged in practice. You know, we, we talk all the time as a staff and with our players about there's two skills that are necessary, and some require athletic ability and some require none. And so early on, we talk about being great at the things that require no talent. Obviously, some kids are going to be more talented than others, but there is no excuse for not being really good at the things that require no talent. One of them being effort. Like you want kids that will play with relentless effort. And we sell to our team all the time. We win a lot of games because we play harder than our opponents. And so if you're going to say that, what do you do to visualize it? And so for us, you know, whenever we go team at the end of our practice, we'll have like a, a huddle out there and, and we'll run six plays and we end everything with a kick. So we'll go six plays, punt team. And when the whistle blows for the punt team to come on, everybody sprints off the field. When I say sprint, like the whistle blows, it's three quick whistles, offense and defense sprint to the sidelines. It's part of our conditioning because we don't condition after practice. It's all built into what we do. And then if kids are not sprinting all the way to the sidelines, we're telling them, hey, you know, everybody on the line, the whole team's going to run because we had somebody who wasn't giving relentless effort to get off the field. And then we remind them, you know, on a Friday night, are we going to require you to sprint to the sideline? No, no, you jog off the field. That's what we do. We're not going to ask you to empty the tank during a game. But it's just kind of a visual for all of our players, and they all know why we're doing it. you got to give them the why, and the why is because we want them to play with relentless effort. Another one's competitive excellence. You know, you have to have kids that are, are going to dial in and be focused with our roster size being what it is. If you just wait for the physical rep uh, to learn the offense or the defense, it's never going to happen. So, you know, our coaches are constantly, you'll see their position group around them as plays are going on. I make sure and demand that our coaches, when you're correcting something out on the field, 
that your your players are listening to you because you're not just coaching the player who made the mistake or complimenting the player who did something well. You're coaching the other people. And that's easier said than done. That's got to be a conscientious effort. And, you know, this year at Mount Union, Larry Karras, who's my former coach, actually gave me a little tidbit, and I'm using it with my position group, which is tight ends. And he would always look at his guys and give them the thumbs up, the thumbs down, or a sideways thumb, meaning kind of indifferent, didn't affect the play one way or another, which is instant feedback. What I've started doing, you know, to, to see if we're competitively excellent is the people in my position group who are not getting the physical reps have to give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. That way I know they're watching what's going on. They're hearing me correct them um, and do that. And then last but not least is the brotherhood. You know, it's, it's being a great teammate. And, and what does that look like? And so there's no place in our practice early on for kids that are going to, you know, get frustrated because someone dropped the ball or, or you're mad because someone missed a tackle. You know, we're looking for guys that are going to lift each other up and we're celebrating those kids every day at the end of practice with our once around. You know, we have all our kids in a huddle and I make every coach pick a player today and why. And majority of the time, those whys are for guys who were excelling at something that required no talent. So I think that's very important early on, specifically before you get your pads on. As coaches, we know that some of the biggest hurdles to our team's success can come from off the field. Your team needs support to tackle the endless list of expenses, uniforms, training equipment, travel, and more. But raising that money can feel like a full-time job. Thankfully, there's Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with your team every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser. With options for online donations, digital discount cards, premium product sales, and even spirit shops, Vertical Raise has top-of-the-line solutions for every fundraising style. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com and we'll get you connected with an exclusive offer on your first fundraiser. Next, we talk with Tyler Roll, who shares his thoughts on how giving players some autonomy within the scheme creates ownership of the scheme and its success. He explains how the older players take a role in helping coach the younger players in the offense and gives examples of players making suggestions to help their offensive efforts. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is player ownership and how do you continue to develop player ownership? It's communication, communication on schemes, on, you know, what they're seeing out of a defense, uh, defensive alignment, defensive technique, just continuing to have that collaboration and communication. So everyone is in alignment with what we see. And if you let the player have some autonomy on maybe a play, maybe a scheme, maybe a technique, and you see that it fits within the offense, they're going to have complete ownership within that scheme. If you were to tell them to install a play uh, to the offense and it was their play, they're going to have so much ownership in that play, in that scheme, that they're going to continue to communicate that as much detail and in depth to the whole unit so it doesn't fail. And if they have that type of ownership within each scheme that the coaches install too, they're going to see that there's complete buy-in within the entire unit. And the other part that I think we do a really good job of up here at NDSU is the players have ownership in the coaching. And with us double repping, splitting the offense and defense in half and having two practices really go on at once, the coaches are running around coaching, but those upperclassmen are running around in coaching as well. And they have that ownership, that foundation to where they want the underclassmen to develop and have success on the practice field as well. And I just, I think that that goes a long way and just continue to promote buy-in and accountability within all players in that locker room. With that idea of giving them ownership in the play in the scheme and the the technique, whatever it might be. I agree with that 100%. And for me, it always started with something we would teach them. We'd call it educated freedom. It was a term I picked up from uh, Andrew Coverdale, who's the offensive coordinator at Cincinnati St. Xavier. And and the idea is like, we're going to teach you how we think it should go at the beginning. But from there, like we're not the ones playing. 
We're not the ones out there. And if you discover something and you try something and it works, let's bring it back to the group because it might work for someone else as well. And it was really uh, eye-opening to how much the players would come back to us with all kinds of different things. I mean, I know even procedurally, you, know, you and I talked when we were in Vegas, we were talking about just different different procedures and tempos and so many of those developed just from guys saying hey coach you know we did this what if in this situation we did this it was like wow that that's it what what kinds of things have the guys brought to you that apply to to the way you do things oh yeah I mean like you said in terms of procedurally how, how you know whether maybe it's a different different signal from week to week in terms of getting to a a concept out on the perimeter Uh, a technique in how they pull and counter you know they felt more comfortable utilizing a skip pull to then a big open and run straight pull you know so being able to to see that in Indy and how comfortable they could move from that position to then bring it to a, a small group setting to a team setting and just going you know giving them that that ownership in that technique from a second puller or whether it be a zone zone insert type technique to stay square to the line of scrimmage and seeing them able to, to ch- change direction, maybe going back inside or outside. I saw it. I loved it. They took ownership in it. They've executed it at a really, really high level. So just those are two, two small things. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't have all the answers. I want to, but, you know, if they see something that fits – our philosophy offensively uh, maybe in a game uh, as they're sitting watching on Sunday and they send it to me and I see that it fits I'll evaluate it and look at it does that fit through this maybe this game plan or is that something we should save for this team what have you so those are just a couple small small examples but you got some smart players and you got to utilize them because they'll be smart coaches someday as well We finished with Todd Drury, explaining things they focus on to set their players up for success early on. Ensuring that you're doing everything to prepare the players will give them confidence in what you are doing and ultimately create buy-in because they see the level of detail that is built around what they do best. Yeah, so really it all starts with, you know, you got to begin with the end in mind. And so looking back at the previous year, looking back at the previous season because you really have an idea of like I coach defense right so everything's time from that perspective today but what do we have to defend the most formation you know personnel formation play what are we defending this year and then once we have that information then we go in and and now it's like okay hey let's make sure that we are you know we're obviously you know your culture your actions your beliefs how you do things you know playing the game the right way for us you know fundamentally doing all those things but what we try to work into all of that is also Hey, here's what 75% of the time last year, we, we saw 11 personnel. Number one formation was three by one. Yo, and we're seeing inside zone or whatever, you know, but we want to build in those things that we're going to see the most inside of that. And so we try to have an all inclusive in fall camp, but early on, you know, it's really about the fundamentals, about the fundamentals, you know, for us, we talk about playing relentless, smart and tough. We want to have great effort. We want to play situational football. We want to, we want to train the mind and the body to play tough. So, Early on, it's about those things, about establishing fundamentals. And what we're going to do is we're going to prepare them for those things that we're going to see later on. But they we're not really talking about that. We're just talking, you know, we're still talking about us. We're, they were just, those are the pictures we're going to show them. But early on about fundamentals, you know, tackling, running the football, you know, attempts on the ball, takeaways, doing those things. And then a couple of things we want to do really early is we want to install our coverage families. So we do not want to, you know, get into the season and, and adjust coverages. So we want to install – you know, all of our coverage families get those in as early as possible. So that way we're not, not jack with that during the season and as well as all the situations. So we want to make sure that early on we're, we're hitting these guys with their, with the situations. Hey, here's, here, here's what second and short means, you know, uh, second and short, it's a burn down or it's a, or what are we going to get, you know, based off the personnel and formation. And then, you know, two minute, four minute, uh, end of half, end of game scenarios, you know, getting all these situations in while we're working on those fundamentals. That's, that's really big for us. So that way, when we get to a scrimmage situation later on in camp or when we get to that first game, you know, those situations as they arise, we're, we're well ahead of those. So, you know, obviously, I think everybody in America is going to say, hey, in camp early on, early season, we're going to focus on fundamentals. I agree 1,000% with that. And then I think the other thing, though, that I've really focused on the last couple of years is during fall camp saying, 
Okay, what are our strengths? And so, you know, are we a man-to-man coverage team? Are we a zone coverage team? You know, can we – Are we? do we have some elite rushers? Do we have somebody that has a strength in terms of, hey, we need this guy at the point of attack? And then being flexible enough inside of our system to say, hey, okay, this kid's really good at this. Let's make sure that he does this as much as possible. So that way we can we can adjust and get him to where he can do what he does best the majority of the time. And so I think really IDing strengths. Obviously, as coaches, you know, we're, a lot of us are, are, you know, we focus on the negative of, hey, we don't do this well, we don't do this well. But throughout that process, early on, teaching the fundamentals, teaching how to play the game the right way, IDing strengths and saying, okay, if we want to win this situation, we need to be able to stop this. How can we do that to the best of our ability? And, and how do we get these kids playing to their strengths early on in the year and not, you know, trying to figure that all out in practice and not wait till you know, week one, two, or three to really figure out, you know, hey, what are we doing well? Focusing on getting the players involved and finding ways to create buy-in is essential for a positive start to the season and a strong foundation that will carry them through the adversity that the season brings. When they are owning the process, they will work harder to solve the issues that arise. Keep tuning into our season series, which is packed with ideas from coaches of every level delivered in a timely manner relevant to what you are facing as the season progresses. You can find the entire catalog of the season on coachingcoordinator.com with over 50 coaches who have contributed ideas to help you in season. Also sign up for the weekly tip sheet, which gives you a rundown of all the ideas shared in the previous week. Check the show notes for additional resources and related episodes.